Hi, I'm Mike Rothman, and this is Song and Wine, Brooklyn Art Song Society's web series where we discuss our upcoming concerts and drink awesome wine. Uh, this is the first episode of our new season, so um, thanks for watching. I'm joined today by Tammy Petty, soprano, who is joining us for our opening night, October 7th, the first concert of our series, Veen. I want to thank our wine sponsor, Waterfront Wines, for giving us this awesome wine we're drinking tonight, a, the Rosso del Moschino. Um, and uh, Waterfront Wines is at 360 Furman Street. Uh, they specialize in organic and all natural wines, um, and they deal a lot with uh, small and local wine dealers. So uh, you should check them out, they're right in Brooklyn Heights. Uh, so without further ado, cheers. Now we get to try it. Yes. Oh my goodness, that's good. It's a good one. My first question for you is, um, the repertoire you're singing specifically by Strauss is Strauss's four last songs. There's this, um, and these are sort of probably the most done of Strauss's songs. What would you say is special about these songs? Well, um, I was thinking about the tradition of, of art song and, and where this falls, this music, and how it comes you know, right after World War II, and how these beautiful soaring melodies must have just been like kind of a healing balm for people. Yeah. You know, for, for many, many people who, who had been oppressed, who had been, um, I don't know how much we want to go into certain <laughs> regimes, but, but, you know, in terms of um, sensing something greater than ourselves, mm -hmm. reaching to the spheres with these yeah. crazy awesome melodies, and, and rich, rich harmonic language that that pervades all of these songs. I think, and I think what's interesting about the four last songs is they're four last songs in kind of two senses. They're literally Strauss's four last songs, mm -hmm. but there's a sense, you, as you said, they were written after World War II, and that romanticism had sort of gone out of fashion. We were now right. into sort of Schoenberg and modernism. And More getting it together, yeah. structure and everything. And I think in a lot of ways, there are four last songs, and this is the four last songs in a romantic style. Mm -hmm. This is a piece that you've sat with for, for many years, I think. Yeah, probably 10 or longer. I mean, I've known it for longer than mm -hmm. 10. I've sung it for about 10 years yeah. now. The thing is, it's like an old friend. You know, you, you, you greet these songs like they're familiar. Mm -hmm. And I always learn something new. You know, I'm, I'm doing the songs with piano, but I'm also looking at the orchestral score as I'm going back and looking mm -hmm. and studying and uh, thinking about the different sonorities and how they depict some of the text, it, it always surprises me. So that's kind of wonderful to have that familiarity, but also to have the surprise of, oh, hey, I didn't see this yeah. this way before. I mean, what's great, I mean, art song is a, on every level sort of a personal mm -hmm. art form in that the poet writing it is often making a very personal statement, and the composer is writing something very intimate often, like, you know, because the text speaks to them. And then we as a sort of interpreters often, you know, I think art song, gives a lot of personal expression that you can sort of, per you can find the words that speak to you, you know, more than other ones and bring those out. So I think that that's, that, that makes it so that um, on an art song performance, even within the same performance, you can sort of grow. These songs and a lot of songs from this period exist simultaneously in orchestral and piano yeah. form. And sort of unique to be able to perform it in two different, sort of scenarios like that, what would you say is the, the differences between the experience of singing these with an orchestra and doing these just with piano as art song? One might think that doing these songs with orchestra means that automatically they be louder. Uh -huh. Sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes you can actually make the soft very, very much softer with an orchestra. Sometimes with the piano, you can make an enormous amount of sound and it's hard to compete against it, the instrument if it's in the same range yeah. as my voice. But um, I think we all we also always start from the text. We always go to the text and go, what was inspiring Strauss to write this in the first place? And then it helps us come to the same starting point, no matter if we're with orchestra or with, or with piano. Yeah. There's so much more flexibility with 
one person as the conductor mm -hmm. in the piano, on the piano bench, playing the piano. There's so much more flexibility in planning how we want to do something. Right? Yeah. But it's also the, the trade-off is sort of, it's like a little Sartre, like you're a little bit condemned to be free with the piano version, where you could do anything. You, you, and you, you have to sort of exercise restraint to make sure you don't take so much time. It's true. Or, or, that, or that you make sure when you're taking time, it's really the musical reason. Because it's easy to be like, well, it'll be just so nice if I could just move this phrase along because I could get to the end of the phrase and mm -hmm. you know, not, and not worry about breathing. But then you sort of have to be like, and you, you can do it, and yeah. we, Brooklyn Arts on Society Pianist, will always follow you <laughs> to the ends of the earth and beyond. <laughs> but hopefully that the, the songs themselves bring such accessibility because of their romanticism and because of their um, just gorgeous, gorgeous melodies that people just fall in love and will be up, just lifted up I think on October 7th. You will be lifted up on October 7th, October 7th. at the Brooklyn Historical Society opening night. Um, works by, <coughs> let's see if I get this list right again, now that I have a lesson <laughs> behind me. Joseph Marks, Hans Fitzner, uh, Richard Strauss, Alexander Zelinsky, in alphabetical order. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was wonderful. <laughs> and. Uh, the performers are. I don't know if I can do these in. I can do these in singer order. Okay. Christina Backrack, uh, Laura Strickland, Tammy Petty, sopranos, uh, Dominic Armstrong, tenor, Tobias Greenhow, baritone, uh, myself, and Yuri Sugiyama on piano. Hmm, I did it. You did it. Um, Rock. You can get tickets at brownpapertickets.com. Uh, and or on our website www.brooklynartsongsociety.org. Um, there's also going to be our fantastic silent auction where you can win uh, tickets to Hamilton and a bunch of other great prizes. So definitely check that out. They're going fast. We're, we, we've already sold almost 100 tickets, so you should definitely buy your tickets ASAP if you're planning on being there before we sell out. Um, so stay tuned for the next song and why we'll be talking about Hans Eisler. Um, but until then. Uh, We'll see you at the concerts. Thanks.